With only two rounds remaining in the season, the IMSA Prototype Challenge heads to the picturesque Virginia International Raceway. This natural terrain road course offers high speeds. It demands high commitment, but the narrow circuit can and will punish you for even the smallest mistake. Hello and welcome to Alton, Virginia. I'm Rick Allen, and this is the IMSA Michelin GT Challenge Weekend. Today, the fifth round of the Prototype Challenge Series hits the track. Sebring winner Stephen McAleer will lead the field to green today after putting the Robillard Racing Norma chassis on pole. Well, it looks like the rain is going to hopefully stay off. Uh, the problem is, is the grass is going to be wet, so it's going to be really tricky out there. You know, just watching the, uh, the Lamborghini cars around there, it looks like a dry racetrack, which is good, but you know, very, very small room for error. So I'm just going to go out and have fun. I got a great driver behind me, uh, Mike Skeen, so you know I'm not going to fight him too hard, and we'll get in a rhythm and kind of see where we end up. But we certainly have the pace based on dry and rain, so I'm, I'm excited. to think we can challenge for the win. And now for a closer look at VIR, let's join Brian Till and Jeremy Shaw for the call. Virginia International Raceway, Alton, Virginia. Three and a quarter miles worth of absolutely three and three quarter miles, I should say, absolutely twisting and turning asphalt. A roller coaster, in fact, uh, the section between turn 14 and 17, known as the roller coaster, areas to watch, turn one, turn 12, turn 14, great braking and passing zones. And of course, out of turn 17, you want a good run, big momentum down the front straightaway so that hopefully you can get a pass done and completed by the time you get to turn one. It is round five of the 2019 IMSA Prototype Challenge Championship and rain beginning to fall on certain areas of the racetrack, that's gonna make it difficult for these drivers as they line up for the green. 23 cars on the grid that Nika Riga, another early spinner, had qualified in fourth position in car number 55 for 47 motorsports, alongside an excellent effort by Dean Baker in car number 19 for Performance Tech Motorsports. And on the front row of the grid, Mike Skeen in the Gilbert Courthoff Motorsports, car number 23, that's the Norma chassis, he making his and the team's return after missing the last round. And on the pole position for the second time this season for Robillard Racing in the Norma M30, car number 43, originally from Scotland, now makes his home in upstate New York, is Stephen McAleer. You were talking about good qualifying efforts. Dean Baker qualifying yeah. third in the 19, and then Nico Rieger in another Norma chassis in fourth, looking for the green. Field still streaming out of Hogpen the last turn. One hour, 34 minutes and change to go. That's when the green will officially fly for round five. And Stephen McAleer in the throttle of that V8 power and rockets past the line, the green flag waves. But what awaits these drivers down in turn one? They've not attacked it yet at speed. A little bit of lockup and now tiptoeing through. You want to maintain, you want to survive the first couple of corners so that you can get temperature. You don't want to lose a position, but you don't want to throw it all away that early either. And already cars trying to take advantage of others' caution sweeping around the high side saw the 52 of chris archinaco trying to improve a position there in turn three and i believe he does yeah so wow that was a, a good restart there for steve mcaleer but uh, right with him there is mike ski dean baker what a great job he's doing trying to hold off nico riga no nico riga oh, squeezes wow. through there at turn six they head up the s's I've always said in a rain race, especially once those conditions just begin and they're new, I don't want to be the leader. I'd just as soon let everybody go. And with an hour and 33 minutes, I shouldn't say let everybody go, but at least let one car go. Let somebody else go be the discoverer and to see where the minefield is that's in front of you. But for Stephen McAleer, nothing doing right now. Mike Skeen all over the rear wing and Nico Rieger beginning to close down as well. Rieger, also in a Norma chassis. It's normal one, two, three. They'd normally take a little bit longer to get up to speed, but Mike Skeen says, no, I'm not waiting for anything. And at the end of the long back straightaway, before the end of the first green flag lap, Skeen has catapulted into the lead. 
That's Naveen Rao, who's off the road. He had a great qualifying effort. That's the number 64 car for the K2R Motorsports team. But a great first lap there for Mike Skeen. And Nico Riga in third position. He, he got not only got past Dean Baker, but he's hanging right with the second place car, the pole sitter of Stephen McAleer. I may paint all the things that I own. That's Skyler Robinson up into fourth position. He can't have a 54. Well, we he started Rieger. ninth in fourth place. Yeah, so Nico Rieger with a good start as well. And Skyler Robinson talked to his father, Chip, a little bit earlier today. And Chip said, I got to tell you, and I'm not telling you this as a proud father, he's a better race car driver than I was. And this comes from a guy who was a factory prototype driver, drove the Nissan GTP car, and he just said he is. He's more calm, cool, and collected behind the wheel than I ever was. And in a pressure, a pressure situation, he's the kind of driver that I would want in my car. Full course caution didn't take long. And full course caution again, Mike Skeen leads, then Stephen McAleer, and then the younger youngsters, Nico Rieger and Skylar Robinson as Naveen Rao sits stranded. And didn't look like Raum had made contact with anything. No, but these cars do have onboard starters. So unable uh, to get it refired. Yeah, maybe second gear or, or, or just can't get a gear for some reason, perhaps. Welcome back to the IMSA prototype challenge at VIR. Let's head back to Brian Till and Jeremy Shaw. Those menacing looking prototypes maintaining the original pace of the safety car will do so until they get to hog pen the last corner and then accelerate aggressively out and that's exactly what Mike Skeen does on the throttle early leading the field back to green and already Nico Rieger trying to put pressure on Stephen McAleer just in front Skylar Robinson not the best restart in the world Remember, not a lot of experience in these cars, but the stack up effect big time down into turn one. And Stephen McAleer slides wide there in turn one. He's going to lose at least two, three positions, a couple of positions anyhow, because Nico Riga snuck through into second place there. Really good restart once again by Nico Riga, the 21 uh, year old from Houston, Texas. And uh, following him through there, I think with Skylar Robinson as well in that MLT car. Yeah, the orange, the white, and purple car and drivers just on their tiptoes being as light as they can with their feet on both the throttle and the brake in these prototypes. If you're a parent and your kids have Legos, you know what it's like to step on one in the middle of the night. That's what it's gonna feel like. If you jump in the throttle too quickly, it's gonna hurt. So you wanna be really light footed as you tread very, very gently in this first lap or two until you can build that temperature in the Michelin tire that's going to help you overcome some of the dampness that still is on this racing surface. Yeah, it's uh, it's I think it's stopped raining now, but uh, there's certainly there's not a lot of there's certainly not a lot of heat in the track because it's a lot cooler today than it was yesterday with all this rain. There's been a cold front move past some big storms overnight and uh, some rain today as well. So the track is uh, once it uh, once it, the, the, these guys have built some heat into their Michelin tires, I think we'll see some pretty fast lap times, but that's not going to be for a little while just yet. I think it'll be just a little while. And to me, the back straight still looks pretty dark. And that signifies to me that it's still damp. And that's going to be one of those things that with the cloud cover and the cool temperatures, these, these drivers are going to have to contend with the entire time very much cooler now than it was in the preceding days. In fact, only showing about 68 degrees right now with still some moisture in the area and the humidity level so high. It's really not a lot of place for the moisture that's on the racing surface to evaporate and move to because the air is so saturated already. Nico Rieger in the 55, now behind Skeen, then Skylar Robinson, Stephen McAleer's dropped to fourth with that little slide there at turn one on the restart. But watching these cars twitching as they try to put the power down, V8, five liter engine in the back, producing somewhere around the 450 to 500 horsepower range, I would think. And great aerodynamics, which means when it's dry, flat out through the climbing S's, just a breathe for the left-hander that takes you up towards Oak Tree. 
and then on the brakes hard down a, a couple of gears through Oak Tree, the slowest corner on the racetrack, and then down the long back straightaway. Yeah, and some battles all the way up and down the field here. As you see, a, a purple sector there for Mike Skeen, the race leader. Just three tenths of a second to get back to Nico Rieger as they crossed the line last time around. He's extended that by another tenth or so, but still nothing to choose really between those two. Skylar Robinson hanging on the best he can in, in third position. And behind him is the kind of a 43. That is Stephen McAleer, the pole sitter, back into the fourth position now, ahead of Dean Baker, Keith Grant, Mo Smith. He's running a really, really good uh, seventh there in car number 11. I mean, started way, way back down the field, just ahead of Chris Wilson in car number three. And Keith Grant having a good run shares the number 40 pole star entry with his brother, David. And they've struggled at times this year, but they know this racetrack well. They have a lot of Formula Atlantic experience, which has a similar power to weight ratio, not nearly the power that a LMP3 car has, but it also doesn't have the weight. So they're familiar with the aerodynamics and that type of horsepower and love driving together. They do rib each other quite quite a bit about who's quicker and who sets up the car and, and that kind of stuff. But having a good run right here. And watch the cars dropping wheels off that little bit of extra asphalt. Bo Smith using that little bit of extra road at the exit of turn three and in a GT car. That's one thing, but in these very low slung prototypes, that's something you got to be really careful about. And dropping a wheel beyond that becomes very problematic because pretty considerate drop offs on the back side of that can really damage the inside of the wheel or tire. Also saw the 47 Rodrigo Fluker mired back in ninth position. You talked about the, the problems there in qualifying for Fluker in the 47 Motorsports. Norma entry that he shares with Austin McCusker and that pairing is your championship pairing. Leo Lamellas, Neil Albarico second right now in the championship, 13 points back. And there is the pass for third position now. So Stephen McAleer was fastest car on the track. You fastest lap of the race last time around, won the 51. Point six, the race leader, a couple of tenths slower than that only, but now the Steve McAleer has got uh, into his stride now in that pole city car, car number 43 for Robillard racing up into third place. He's got past Skylar Robinson. Now he's going to try and catch the two leaders. It just always seems to take that car in particular, even more so than any of the other Norma chassis, another lap or so to find the speed and to get its legs underneath him. And Stephen McAleer with an absolutely spectacular braking at the end of the back straightaway the inside front tire just barely rolling over he's just any more brake pressure at all they would have locked just right there walking that very very fine line and all the way close all the way down there is Skylar Robinson we're watching the race leaders heading up towards the uphill S is now Steven McAleer he, both he and Nico Riga set to identical lap times last time around. One minute 50.000. Uh, that's number 55 and 43, the second and third place cast, but it's number 30, 23 of Mike Skeen, who leads for the Gilbert Courtoff Motorsports team. Well, look at the last three laps for the first three drivers. A 150.002 for Mike Skeen a 150.000 for Nico Rieger and a 150.000 for Stephen McAleer. The top three drivers, two one thousandths of a second Isn't that crazy? is all that separates them. This is wild. Shows the level of competition and it also shows the talent level of these young drivers. We talk about the one make series. Well, obviously multiple chassis allowed in the prototype challenge category, but all run the same power plant. So somewhat of a spec series, and I really do believe it breeds drivers that are the stars of tomorrow. Yeah, uh, We see it in all the one make series that run under the IMSA banner, and we see it in prototype challenge as well. These are the guys and gals that you could see in a DPI in a few years, or they could move into a GT machine just as well. Yeah, no question about it. This is uh, some super battling there back in the pack. This is a battle for uh, sixth position on back with
Keith Grant holding that position. Mo Smith right behind him. And a great That's, move by Chris, Chris Wilson. Wilson. Chris Wilson in the number three from JR3 Racing on debut in a prototype says, hey, you know what? I like this. I like the well, downforce. I yeah, like the grip. Well, I mean, the last, uh, Chris, he's never driven one of these cars before. The last prototype he drove was nearly 20 years ago. Uh, back, back at Daytona in the 24 hours, he did several seasons of prototype racing back in the late 90s. But it's been a long, long time for Chris. But he's absolutely loving driving this car for this new team put together by uh, Billy Glavin and his dad. His dad is, is Bill Glavin, the, the junior. Billy is Billy Glavin, the third. Back to green for IMSA Prototype Challenge at VIR. And that full course caution came at a time when a lot of drivers were thinking about heading into pit lane. It kept them from doing so, although a couple of drivers did sneak in under the wire, the number 11, Mo Smith, being one of those. But still, top nine cars on the racetrack have yet to make a pit stop. Mike Skeen being one of those, then Nico cars. Rieger and Skylar Robinson. That's the top three. It's the top eight cars now because the number 11 car was in during that caution period. We'll have to find out whether it was legal or not, but he's still going to be a lap down along with all the other guys that had already pitted. You're going to lose more than a lap here by making a mandatory pit stop, so uh, there's a lot yet to be paid out. And because you leave, lose more than a lap, I think this potentially might play into, into the hands of the cars that already stopped, but I'm gonna have to think about that. I'm have to wait uh, and see where uh, where they all cycle through after making their pit stops. And Jeremy Shaw, I am more than willing to let you sit and think about that because you're a better strategist than I. The strategy for the drivers is really head down, focus forward, and move the car forward. That's exactly what Skylar Robinson is trying to do in the 54, that orange and white. Liger that heads in to the roller coaster at the end of the back straightaway, gets past a lap car and sight set firmly on what's in front, trying to hunt down first Nico Rieger and then Mike Skeen. And it'll be interesting to see if it is as it has been in the past, and that is the Ligier chassis getting up to speed just a little bit quicker. And if you know that, and if you follow the history of it as a team owner as, or as an engineer, you are in the ear of your driver saying, go, go, go. Now's the time that you've got a better car underneath you. See what you can get. 40, Keith Grant being shown in fourth. A great run for him right now. Yep. Up in the fourth position, their best run of the year by far. Yeah, and uh, Cameron Kausen is running fifth yeah. position. And the other three cars that are on the lead laps, number 47, Rodrigo Fluka, the championship leader. Blake Mount has done a really nice first stint in the car number seven, and Chris Archinaco in car number 52. Those three all now on the pit lane for their mandatory pit stops. For Mike Skeen, you wonder how far are they going to go? And certainly, you want to go out and put some good laps in and look at Lance Wilsey just being hyper aggressive up in Oak Tree and he's got his splashers on and I, I don't know I'm pretty sure it's not because he's saying look out I'm coming but it is a pretty ironic deal that he has his splashers on and a hyper aggressive move watch Lance Wilsey the last car in the shot excuse me coming through gets up there past the number two and with a forceful move, Michael Klemecki must have been thinking, what on earth was that? But we'll see with a decisive, a bold but decisive move to get that done. Out in front, Mike Skeen still beginning, or still, I should say, not still beginning, still pulling away a little bit after this restart over Nico Rieger and a problem for Chris Wilson. Spin there. 
that's a shame because uh, that was a new fastest lap of the race by Mike Skeen on that last lap. He's going to try and pull away as much as he can before he makes this pit stop. As we see the fourth place car, uh, well, third and fourth place cars of Skylar Robertson, car number 54, and the pole star motor racing entry, car number 40 of, uh, of uh, the, the Grant brothers making a pit stop as well. David Grant taking over the number 40 pole star Ligier here at VIR. 48 and a half minutes left in round five of the 2019 season. Only six rounds in all on the championship. So if you're going to find your way to the front of the championship, you better be digging and digging hard right now. Austin McCusker, Rodrigo Fluker lead the championship, but not having one of their most impressive runs here this weekend. They won last time out at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Also, podium finishes at Daytona and at Sebring. A little bit of a struggle at Mid-Ohio under difficult conditions. But right now, the good news for them and the bad news for the other championship contenders, Leo Lamellis and Neil Alberico, they are being shown right now in the pit lane where they have been for quite a while. In fact, the last 10 laps, the number four has been in pit lane. And that is bad news for Lamellis and Alberico, good news for McCusker and Fluker. Yeah, certainly is. And uh, there's still, yeah, on the outlaps now is Austin McCusker in that kind of 47, the championship leader, looking to uh, make up even more ground at the head of the championship chase how close this racing is. I don't think that the 52 even knew that well, Scott Huffacker. That's Nico Ronde now into the wheel of the number 11 car. And uh, not sure whether these have been uh, instructor and pupil. They're both from Northern California. Nico Ronde, well, originally from, from, from France and Brazil and everywhere else, a former uh, Barber Dodge Pro Series champion way back in the day. Uh, and Scott Huffacker, a youngster making his name in, in this sport. Yeah, and for Scott, I, I just can't believe that, I, I have to believe he didn't see Nico Ronde. I don't think that was an aggressive move saying, don't try to do that here or whatever. I think he just lost sight of him. You can argue whether he should or shouldn't have lost sight of him, but I think he must have scary moments there. You also saw Dylan Murray leaving pit lane and now a problem for another of the entries. Is that Naveen Rao? Is that Again, the we got back going again, did he? Yes, he did. Yeah, a long way down. And some pretty significant damage there. No, I don't think that is Rao. It is. Is it? Yeah, it is. Number 64. Up into Oak Tree. And a very... <laughs> yeah, that's a Deja vu car, all it? over again. Yeah, not right. <laughs> it, it doesn't work, you know, there's a, and, and it is difficult. Don't think for a minute that that is an easy section of racetrack. So here's a second place car now onto the pit lane. So Nico Rieger in the 55, handing that car over to Wyatt Schwab. Schwab out of Pennsylvania and a very talented race car driver as well. You see Mazda on the wing there on that center board that helps the car with lateral stability. It is not a Mazda power plant in the back. Nico Rieger for winning the MX-5 championship, got his scholarship money and came here in that road to the 24 Mazda scholarship program. And with it brought the Mazda sponsorship, and therefore it is on the side of the car, as you said earlier, Jeremy. And here is uh, now Stephen McAleer. We're going to have to wait and see where he comes past now, and then where Mike Skeen will rejoin, because Stephen McAleer is a long, long way. He's about 16 seconds ahead of Kyle Masson in kind of a 19, who's taken over from Dean Baker in second place. Here he goes, and Mike Skeen is still in the pits. There is the stationary car of the uh, 
of, uh, of Mike Steen. So again, it was definitely an advantage having made your pit stop before that full course caution. And Stephen McAleer now is, is really uh, comfortably in control of this race. And we understand the incident involving the 86 is under review, which I'm not exactly sure what incident that is. Just looking at the bottom of the timing screen, also showing penalties, one for the 40, which is the Keith and David Grant car for an improper pit stop. It's going to be a stop plus 23 seconds. That tells me that they were probably that much short on the stop, so they'll bring them back in, make them pay what they didn't pay in the beginning as far as time-wise goes, and then send it back out on the racetrack. And then car 11, improper pit stop, fueling in a closed pit. Yeah. Stop plus four minutes. Ouch. That's one of those safety issues, and the well, officials want to make sure that they... It's it's kind of actually not. It's because that's a car that the 11 cars, that's the one that came in when we went to full course caution. When the pits were closed, they tried, they, they, gotcha, they gotcha. tried to argue they were already committed to, to making their pit stop when the full course caution was shown. Clearly, the race officials will have re reviewed all of that with their data and the camera they have down there, and they'll determine that it's not the case. So a penalty it will be. I misread that as in being a closed pit right. stall Correct. And without the proper yeah, equipment. I agree. So, but, no. but yes, you were right then. We talked about that earlier. So that penalty will be served. 38 minutes and 50 seconds to go from Virginia International Raceway. And for Stephen McAleer, he'll have to wait that long to see the checkered flag. This team has done what they needed to do, worked their way through traffic, had the right pit stop strategy, and Mike Skeen did everything that he could do, but it seems like the way the yellows and the cautions have played and when you decided to make your pit stop have been integral into where you come out at the end of all of this. Skeen and his team tried to leave him out there as long as he could to claw his way back up and close that gap but nothing doing. Stephen McAleer after the stops, a commanding lead. Right now, he's got 19 and a half seconds back to Kyle Masson, and then 35 seconds back to Chris Wilson, who's yeah. being shown in second, Mike Skeen in fourth. Yeah, third position for Chris Wilson in Carnival 3. That's a brilliant run uh, by, by Chris and this entire brand new team to this championship. As we talked about before, a lot of experience on this race team, but not an IMSA competition, uh, well, at least not in the IMSA prototype uh, challenge competition, but a lot of experience overall. Billy Glavin, Jr., he worked for, for Hendrick Motorsports for for several years on their with, on their on their Monster Cup Energy programs, so uh, in stock cars, but it's a very professional team, brand new team. They also are very accomplished in the vintage realm. They run a lot of vintage cars for some interesting customers and some certainly very interesting cars as well. But it's their first step into this level of professional racing. Uh oh, Problem that's that's got a faker running in the ninth position. And he hit that tire wall pretty hard because it's moved a bundle out of the way. Let's see what happens. He and Lance Wilsey down into turn one, and Lance just said, well, if you're gonna outbreak me, you're gonna have to go deep. And indeed, Hoffacker did go deep, too deep, and Wilsey just kind of stayed to the outside and said, fine, go right ahead. What is this, though? The 55 involved, that's Wyatt Schwab, the 54. Dylan Murray. And the number 11. And the 11. Look at Ron Day, well, he's been in all sorts of dramas. Number 54 and number 11, I think we're, we're kind of battling. Oh, they weren't, they weren't particularly close to each other. It's curious. This is up just past the top of the climbing S's, the fast left-hander that leads you to Oak Tree. They've all gotten back underway, and I don't see much damage to any of those three cars. Take a look. I just followed him off. It, it, it's like Lemmings. Yeah. Is the 55 off? You know what? There, there must be oil There's down something there. Something in yeah. that, that turn. All three of them look like they did exactly the same thing. And with the waving yellow flag that you see up there, the following cars had the opportunity to slow down. Now full course caution is out. All right, well, this is going to make things interesting. 
Here we go, get ready. The 74 car out in front, Garrett Grist, and he's not going to be easy oh, to get around. Flying. No, he, well, no, there's no way. He, no. He's one of the fastest cars yeah. on the road track. He's going to pull away here from the field, uh, but uh, Jonathan George, though, is in second place. Yeah, he's pulling over to the, to the left-hand side of the road here. Grist, I believe, pulled into pit lane. Back to green, the flag waves. We're racing at VIR. It's IMSA Prototype Challenge. And the leader, Kyle Masson, in the 19, the blue and white entry, down into turn one. And being raced and raced hard by Nico, by Nico Rondé. Yeah. Rondé. No, oh, that's not. It's Ross Truss. OK, is that Aaron Popolado? Big upon Aaron Popolado there, who was the first car uh, a lap down. So, so he's, he's trying to get his lap back. He's got his lap before. back. If it were to go back yeah. to full course caution, he would cycle around. And I believe that Stephen McAleer has gotten a tremendous restart. Is that him that I see right behind Masson? It is. Game on. McAleer is there. Yeah, and he's got to be patient now. He's got a much faster car. Uh, oh, look at the, uh, look at the spray. Be, yeah, look, as they go up the hill particularly. The sheen on the racetrack. This is where weather. it's so slick. It's much wetter, isn't it, at the, uh, at the top end of the circuit here. As you said earlier on, a lot of elevation change here at Virginia International Raceway. You see how nervous the cars are trying oh. to put the d power down, twitching. Side to side, McAleer trying to get the run and a problem for the 47. The championship leader running in fifth position. Austin oh. Koska and Joe Robinard have got together. And they'll get try to get those cars turned around. Meanwhile, the battle for the lead, McAleer has the inside for the left-hand bin, but it's not the preferred line through the next bit. Masson, a good job defending. Hard fought racing down through the roller coaster. Now, drier road. Press a little bit harder, dig a little bit deeper through the compression at Hawk Pen. McAleer trying to get a run. Indeed, he has. Looking to the outside, Masson's going to make him go the long way. But for McAleer, a great run off of Hawk Pen out down at the bottom of the roller coaster. Just motors by. Masson relegated to second. Now, the problem that McAleer had behind the safety car, is that a distant memory? He's going to have to go through that corner and negotiate that section of the racetrack several more times, closing in on 12 and a half minutes to go. Yeah, and uh, Mike Skeen has got himself up into third place in Carnival 23, but he's got five seconds of a deficit to make up to catch the two leaders. For Stephen McAleer, this is where it all went wrong, and you can see the pavement change the color change on that pavement as you climb up through the S's and then when you get up to the top there's a sheen on the road spray from the tires the Michelin tires the slick Michelin tires and the sheen on the road off to the side of albeit very narrow a little bit of a dry line that is somewhat forming and now another car off up at the top of the S's showing just how damp it is. It is absolutely treacherous out there, particularly at the, uh, at the south end of the racetrack. And for McAleer, now past the 70 of Jonathan George. And I think the moisture is coming towards the front straightaway. I think that rain band moving this way because there was spray down the back straightaway that I had not seen before. Still dry through the roller coaster, still dry through hog pen and onto the front straightaway. It's Robillard off the road again. Joe Robillard with a problem. Scares me when I see that car with an issue because they're painted identically to the 43. Robillard trying to get refired. 11 minutes now to go from VIR. Championship leader, we saw Austin McCusker with a problem. He's being shown back in ninth. The only good news there is that their nemesis in the championship, Leo Lamellas, Neil Alberico, out of this race with a mechanical issue. We hope this is the dash to the checkered flag with just under six minutes to go. Stephen McAleer will bring the field back to green. Just a couple of laps is all these drivers will have. That will be their shot. 
for Mike Skeen, fourth car in line. He led this race early. These last several cautions have given him the opportunity to claw his way back up to the front. But it's Stephen McAleer, the pole sitter, that leads into turn one. Skeen, third in the order. A lap car in there, and Kyle Masson in second in the blue and white number 19. There's a train of cars, uh, kind of fifth, sixth on back, number 40 car, number 54, number 75, number 7, and number 47. They're all pretty much nose to tail at the battle for fifth position on back. And for Stephen McAleer, now heading up into the more treacherous areas of the racetrack where there is more moisture on the track and you can see the headlights reflecting in that damp pavement, just how slick it's going to be and you have to negotiate those corners with such care, such caution. And yet you can't really slow down all that much because your competition inching away. How fast do you go? How hard do you press? Chris Wilson under attack from the 60 of Tonis Kazimitz. Wilson, a great run going right now. He is fourth overall, so he can let Kazimitz go if he would like, because that's not for position. But Kazimitz is a lap down in car number 60. Wilson to the left in the black car, the number three, Kazimitz to screen right, driver's left, gets the position right behind Wilson now is the 52, and once again, that's Scott Huffacker, and he does not figure in into the overall order. Right, and he's also one lap down. He's dicing for position with Tony's Kazimitz. The car right behind them is number 54. That's Dylan Murray in car number 54, the orange, purple, and white car, uh, as he's trying to, trying to make his way forward here, running in the fifth position. So he's got past David Grant on that last lap. David Grant is running now in sixth position for pole star motor racing. Dylan Murray with that problem early on that caught out himself and several other drivers up in turn 10. Caught our leader out from behind the safety car, but McAleer has worked his way back up to the front. It's Stephen McAleer with three minutes and 10 seconds to go, looking for his second victory of the season, one in a solo drive at Sebring. And right now beginning to pull away from Kyle Masson, counting down inside three minutes now. Should be, I would think, just one lap to go when they get to the line. It's going to be close, but I would think it would be one lap to go. Just about, I think it'll be. It will be fairly close, but we've still got a little bit more racing to come in. Now, can, can Mike Skeen close the, the gap to Kyle Masson? He was a little bit quicker last time around. Top three have now cleared lap traffic down the back straightaway, all in vision of one another. Skeen can see the two cars in front. And I guarantee you, Stephen McAleer, if he checks his mirror, can see the headlights of the cars directly behind him. His crew on the radio with him, I'm sure, giving him the split. It was 2.4 seconds at the line the last time by to Kyle Masson. Counting down, will be inside two minutes, but I think they're gonna have another lap to go. So I think it's gonna be two laps to go. No white flag this time by for Stephen McAleer. That's right, the lap time's now 1.47 that time for Stephen McAleer, almost identical to his lap time last time around. Carl a little bit quicker in second place, but I think Stephen McAleer now, he can kind of manage that gap. He knows he's got a good car, he knows the track. It's certainly dried up again. It's not as wet as it was when we went back to green flag racing, but he can kind of look at his mirrors, gauge how far he is ahead of Kyle Masson here and just kind of bring it home from here. But Mike Skeen, he is looking heads up forward. He's trying to track down that number 19 car. That's the battle for second and third. Up into the damp area of the racetrack through the climbing S's. Stephen McAleer is about to go and all of a sudden you get to that area. The racetrack turns dark, spray off the tires. You know that there's moisture there, but you know you've got these nice, warm, sticky Michelins underneath you. Are they sticky enough? Not for Kyle Masson. He is off and Skeen is through. The same corner that has bitten several today has bitten Kyle Masson with just two laps to go. Manages to get back on the racetrack. A podium is still within reach. Yeah, he's 
still rejoined in third position. He still had enough of a gap over Chris Wilson in fourth place in the leading bronze category driver by a long, long way in this race. He's got a whole lap on uh, Michael Klemecki. He's actually got two laps, I think, on uh, Michael Klemecki in car number two. Be the better part of the two laps, a lap and a half at least. And for Kyle Masson, focus forward. It's done. It's over. It's behind you. Get on with your business. You still have another lap to go. Focus. Counting down. 15 seconds left in this race. So for Stephen McAleer, he'll have to do another lap. White flag waves. And what that means for Mike Skeen, he's got three and three quarters miles of racetrack left that he can use to perhaps close down. Can he catch McAleer in front? Just 2.8 seconds at the line the last time by. Mike Skeen could get this done. Can he? Where's Chris Wilson? Does Chris he Wilson's have enough to make it? Road. Does Mike Skeen have enough to close down? Chris Wilson is indeed gone. He's fallen to the back of the pack of cars. He's back down in the ninth position, so he's now last of the cars that are on the lead lap. That's just how quickly it can change in these challenging conditions. The sheen on the road up the far end of the racetrack continues. It's still damp up there for McAleer. He has to dance through there, tiptoe one more time. But for Mike Skeen, he's going to lay it all on the line. He's closing down. Skeen closing down on McAleer, but running out of time, closer than he's been for the last half hour, other than when they were behind the safety car. Spray off the tires, and then they enter that drier section of the racetrack as they crest the hill through the roller coaster one last time for Stephen McAleer. The racetrack dry here. You can press a little harder, dig a little deeper. What can Mike Skeen do if he was going to get it done? Probably needed to take advantage in the areas of the racetrack where it was a bit trickier. Through Hawkpin one last time for Stephen McAleer. You can breathe a sigh of relief. It's done. Checker flag flies, and Stephen McAleer takes win number two on the season. But what a drive by Mike Skeen. I really think it was his race to win, but Lady Luck and the caution came at just the wrong time. And for Stephen McAleer, what a great drive, overcoming mistakes. And you can see cars still struggling to find their way home. Michael Glemicki with a spin there at the exit of turn two. And Stephen McAleer says, I'm going to put that problem behind the safety car out of my mind, and I wish you guys would stop talking about it up there in the booth. Welcome back to Virginia International Raceway, where round five of the prototype challenge is in the books. Stephen McAleer held off the hard-charging Mike Skeen for the win, so let's hear from him. You know, the, uh, the the guys gave us an amazing car. Give it up. <laughs> the guys gave us an amazing car. Mark Manning set up. <laughs> Joe, Ro go. Joe Robillard. Um, yeah, we, what, a, what a, an insane race. I missed the pit box. They had to push me back. Um, and then on the restart there, I was willing to take a couple of chances and see if I could get around some people. But some of the trickiest conditions I've ever been in. Hence a spin on the uh, behind the pace car, but uh, great, great fun. Uh, the norm has been fantastic all weekend. I just want to say hi to everybody at Monticello Motor Club, and uh, hopefully we can keep this momentum into Road Atlanta. For Stephen McAleer, he did exactly what he needed to do. No one drove a perfect race today. Yeah. You can't in these conditions. You make a mistake, you overcome it. That's exactly what he did. That's what brought him the second victory of the season. But all kinds of stories throughout this field today. A brand new team debuts, and they do debut very, very strong. And championship implications. We saw the problems for Leo Lamellas and Neil Alberico. That is going to separate them in the championship from Austin McCusker, Rodrigo Fluker, who didn't have a perfect day either by any stretch of the imagination but they are going to stretch their championship lead. Yeah, they're going to be almost unassailable lead going into the final round at Petit Le Mans at Road Atlanta in a few weeks' time. So uh, the, even though Austin McCusker and Rodrigo, Rodrigo Fuka had their problems in that championship leading car, still they will extend their lead. The final race of the 2019 prototype challenge season comes your way in October when the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship Series hits Road Atlanta for Petit Le Mans weekend. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching.
This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of the International Motorsports Association. We would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.